Alright, another Ursa Furiosa build that you've already seen for the dozen time, but I promise you mine is slightly different to what's been shown before. The same rules are being applied with these subclasses are being used, however I'm making sure the synergy between void elements and elemental wells are a lot more common for the current user as I want to show just how strong wells are for endgame content such as Grandmasters. It's pretty fantastic with keeping you and your team topped up with ability energy and orbs of power, and it's a nice changer compared to using charged with lights or warm my cells. Now keep in mind you are free to pick and choose which mods you want to use if you disagree with what's currently being shown. I am happy with receiving feedback if you find an alternative that is better to use instead, such as using protective light for extra protection. What I'm going to show you is a fantastic build that you can pick up and use for whatever tough content in mind and be rewarded for greatly supporting your team whether new or veteran. It's so simple in fact that you could probably skip the majority of this video and head straight to the pros and cons section of the video, but please don't do that. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it does go a long way for me. Starting with the subclass, we will be using Code the Commander to utilise the team wide benefits such as its super and its ability to wipe out zones or combatants via one single void detonator. This tree has everything you'll need for endgame such as the ability to buff your team's output damage by creating a large banner shield for them while also protecting them from all harm. You can attach a void detonator to targets that can explode and cause even more damage over time via the controlled demolitionist perk. And then killing an enemy with a void detonator can grant you grenade, melee and health regen back via the resupply perk. All of this combined makes this one of the strongest subclass to pick if you ever venture into raids, nightfalls or generally anything that involves taking on a wide number of combatants. Now when you attach the exotic Urza Feroza to the subclass, your shielding ability becomes one of the best offensive and defensive tools to use when you can truly block anything that is attacking you. Although the Zotic has been recently nerfed, it still holds up weight for the general users around and I found that adding on the power preservation mod can help with increasing the potency of how much orbs of power you can get. This is important as you want to produce enough orbs for your team to get their super back up and create a orb farm to where you can rinse repeat this over and over again. As shown, the subclass is pretty great within itself and it can stand its own with or without the help of additional items to boost it further. We can pair this subclass up with the powerful Le Monarch build and Elemental Armand mod so that we can produce wells as we go and from here you can become a walking empowering tank who is capable of supporting yourselves and your team from start all the way to the very end of your mission. Very easy and once I put this together you'll see how absolutely powerful this build can get. For the weapons, I sort my loadout to fit in with the season's champion so over time this will change as well. But for example, my current primary is the Chroma Rush AR with Rampage and Substance and this piece of roll is great for just non-stop firing on the target and not needing to reload over and over again. Although minor to major combatants take a lot more damage than normal, this is where I believe the weapon will fit in the most compared to any other weapons in game. It being a 720 RPM with 16 in the magazine means that by the time I take out one combatant, my substance perk will kick in, partially reload my weapon and then activate the rampage perk for a quick damage boost which I can then focus onto the next combatant with even less ammo needed this time round. The weapon is like a exotic within itself, it will keep escalating its damage and reloading my weapon as long as I get a kill with it which makes it one of the best ARs to use in endgame content where you don't have time to reload or think, just shoot until there's no one left but you. Well, that's how I think of it of course. For secondary, I'm using the Limonarch Zotic Bone for its great application in shutting down older champions and in general just being a great bow to use for endgame. If you ever wanted a bow that you can rely on from start to finish, the following bow is probably one of the best pick and use for endgame in general. Its overtime burn damage is great for applying pressure on targets and speed up how quickly you can take them out without needing to rely on your heavy for doing so. On top of that, if you land a critical hit on combatant with it, you can spread its poison effect onto others and thus become a great crowd controller within itself. I found pairing this with the following setup allows me to cover more ground while within my group as I can help everyone dispatch a group of combatants with just one single bounce. Also, attaching elemental armors to the build allows me to create wells on top of what I'm doing which I plan to utilize as much as possible so non-stop poison damage and wells as we go will help my team stay on top of abilities that they have. For heavy, I chose to use the Reed Regret with Warpawn Quickdraw and this will be used for taking out the heavy hitters we'll be facing. 
Great DPS, though Vorpal will be nerfed quite soon, but nonetheless, the weapon within itself is still great as normal. I don't have the Parkour Deconstruction mod attached as I opted for a different setup this time round. Though this slightly nerves our damage that all of our weapons will be doing in a short time frame, 9 times out of 10, our teammates will have a mod attached which makes it easier for us to navigate and use something else instead. For stats, discipline and intellect are primarily your two areas of focus for the entirety of the build. Recovery and resilience also play a big part as well, but naturally you will have this area fully ramped out to begin with before focusing on the more important areas. As we will be utilising the suppression grenade to suppress combatants while also attaching void detonators, both being killer combo for shutting down the large group of combatants we face, it makes sense to aim as high as possible for the discipline stats as you can. For this, 70 seems to be a really good spot to aim for as it will still leave you enough room to add in additional mods to support this area or further invest in your intellect area if you need it. For extra support, do remember we have the resupply perk from our subclass that will be greatly helping us out from start to finish as long as we net a void detonator. We do also have the elemental armament, elemental ordnance, bountiful world times 2 which you can reduce down to 1 if you wish, and then the double bombers mod for more energy as we go along. All of this will be enough for you to get at least half to a full set of grenade energy back if you manage to land and trigger all the corresponding perks and mods. For intellect, we have 60 as this will passively garner us enough super energy as we play along. Now, you may be thinking that if this stat is so important, why do we go higher or invest more? The reason being is that with the Ursa attach and a good team who knows how to use their super often, we can farm all the power relatively easy within the designated area we are in. As I will be the main supplier of all possible my team, it will be my responsibility to make sure I take up as much damage when in my super to feed my team and actively let them do what they can and then be rewarded by them using their super. If all this is done correctly, not only will my team be able to rotate supers effectively and feed each other with orbs of power, but I will also garner a bit of super energy thanks to my assorted gauntlets, which should place me close enough to repeat the process again and again. In simple terms, as long as I pop my super and create orbs for others, I should be good from here on out. This means mods such as Fond of Wisdom or Dynamo are not wholly needed, which is great as it opens up mod slots usage for us. Instead, mods such as Power Preservation would probably be a good choice to pick instead as you can use it for both offensive and defensive while creating even more orbs of power as you go along. Still, it's always best to play around with this area and see what fits your choice as you may find that using Frontal Wisdom instead may grant you the best effects going forward. We then lastly have the Seeking Worlds mod which will allow our world to be more reliable than before. The one issue with wells in endgame content is how, if you proc one in a really far away location, you may not be able to get it which leads to them being wasted. Although this mod helps with fixing said issue by allowing it to track you and your team within a 5 meter radius, it still doesn't fix that issue of it spawning at a very far distance. I've found that the mod still does pretty well in endgame and is more useful for my team rather than me with quickly giving them the boost that they need quickly. I would say, see how this mod works for you as you may find it useful in lower tier content rather than higher tier content, but if you're like me and you move about a lot, you may actually find it quite useful for the higher tier content. Now, here are the rest of the mods we are using for creating the setup and how they all work hand in hand. For head we have intellect, power preservation and element armors mod, arm we have minor discipline, anti-barrier AR, overload bow and secret worlds mod. For a chest, we have Recovery, Concussive Damner, Sniper Damage Resistance, and Elemental Orders mod. A leg, we have Intellect, Effusion Scavenger, and Bountiful Wells mod. Mark, we have Discipline, Bomber Times 2, and Bountiful Wells mod. There have been plenty of talk from players when it comes down to Elemental World mods and their usage in endgame content. Although they aren't the strongest when compared to War My Cells or Charge with Light, they do offer the player the opportunity to expand on the current abilities and focus more on utilising them more often compared to anything else. I find them to be the best of both worlds as they offer a primary effect that players will be working towards, but also offer a secondary effect that can help degenerate abilities much quicker depending on this subclass and elemental you're using. Many will argue and say that as long as you boost your most used stat to 100, etc, the world mods become useless in themselves, which is slightly true as by doing so you're wasting the option to expand on other key stats that will play some kind of pivotal role within your own builds. Wells now offer the opportunity for players to expand their current ability stats more 
but also ringing in how much you should invest into these areas. They all had their place in game and with mods such as Elemental Ordnance, Armaments, Thunder Might and Seeking Wells providing players with more control with their setups, it would be really hard to avoid such a feature in game. Which is why I want to show off this version of the build that is already popular but offers many ways to customise it to your liking. With this build, any endgame content you have in mind will allow this build to succeed in the highest echelon that you dip your toes in and it has everything that you want. For example, you have a super fast super cooldown which will benefit everyone in your team. You become a consistent source of wealth and orbs of power that will keep you and your team fully stocked. You can spread a miasma of void and poison onto combatants and generally excel in crowd control. You overall become a super soldier capable of suppressing combatants and empowering others while also becoming empowered yourself. If that doesn't sound uber to you then I really don't know what else to say. The build is a beast in endgame content such as Nightfall Ordeals, Lost Sectors, Dungeon, Gambit Boss Phases or Grandmaster Nightfalls and will seriously be a big hand for those that want to do these content safely and efficiently. Everything that you see here, it does what it's designed to do and is honestly a great addition to all titans who are ready for the tougher content ahead. The great thing about this build is that you can swap out every weapon the mods use and the results will still be the same. My version is more designed for support my team through any way possible but you may want more damage instead or more health or more ways to utilize your super. Take this build as an example and go forward with your design. You will see there are more ways to use this build than what's currently being shown. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with any new changes. Once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next video.